In this video, we're gonna be doing a scientific experiment to find out how accurate these Garmin watches are. Welcome everybody to 40 Runs. How are we all doing, people? Yep, you know the drill. Let me know in the comments. And why does he keep going on about those comments? Well, it's really important that you get involved in the video as much as anything else. That's why I make the videos, so you get involved. So make sure that you stick down in the comments how you're doing and do you have a Garmin watch or another GPS watch and how accurate is it? Now, this is a very scientific uh, video this week um, about GPS um, accuracy. Tobin and I inside did a 5K time trial that was a bit of an ad hoc time trial and all our three watches were totally different to each other's. We also did an Epping Forest run, uh, trail run, that also we got three different bits of data. So we've been arguing about it ever since, and I thought, you know what? It's about time that we try and figure out what the hell is going on with these GPS running watches. Now I'm really lucky, and Garmin sent me recently these three videos, and this is not paid by Garmin, I'm not getting you know, sponsored by Garmin or anything like that. They sent these three um, watches in lately uh, for us to review and test out. So I thought, what a cool way to sort of, you know, sort of check uh, the accuracy and the more the differences between the running watches by giving these three watches to Toby. Uh, he's going to go and run a, uh, a race. So we've got a 10k race in London. Now you would hope that that 10k race is accurately measured, right? Now Toby's going to start these watches at a predetermined time. He's going to start all of them and he's also going to be running in his Garmin Fenix watch as well. Okay, right? So we've got four Garmins on test here. Now obviously Tobe can't start all of those at the same time as he crosses the line. It's humanly impossible and he's actually filming on the day for me. Um, so what we've agreed is that he's going to start all four watches. Simon's going to help him and he's going to start all four watches at a predetermined uh, point. And it doesn't, the distance doesn't really matter today. It's more about how uh, or what the differences are in terms of pace and distance, but from that point, um, the heart rates and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be really interesting to see the data that the, the, the f well, four watches um, pull in, and we're going to have a look at that at the end of the video. So that's where we're at. That's the idea. This could go really badly wrong. It could be really interesting. It could be as dull as dishwater. Who the hell knows? But we thought to settle, well, not settle the argument, but to try and give some more sort of weight behind our arguments that we're having with each other, we thought we'd give this a go. So, with that out of the way, let's hope, uh, let's head over, if I could speak, it'd be awesome. Let's head over to the Winter 10K and see how Toby gets on racing in four watches. Good morning and welcome to, well, the milk float really, isn't it? We are on the way to the Winter 10K now. So I wanted to film this bit before we get to London because London is really windy today and you're not gonna hear anything that we say. So Toby so I say hello as well. Hello. But speed guys here. So I wanted to quickly go through the watches. So we've got he's sorted all this out. So we've got the 245. We've got the 55. We've got the 745. And what we've done, because he's smart speed go, he's added a Coros Apex watch to the mix. So is that right, Coros? Apex me, uh, yeah. to the mix. Right, so, he's also got on his watch, on his wrist, on his watch. Um, are you wearing your, got the other one? Yeah, so he's got his, his Fenix Pro 6X Six. Six Six. thing on as well. So he's gonna be wearing five watches. We've got Garmin covered, and now we've got Coros covered as well. We tested this yesterday at Part Run, and it seemed to work okay, actually. Um, all right, we've added the Coros in. Uh, so just out of interest, the Coros, just for, because I spoke about the Garmin's just before it, what's it, what's it got on it? What, how much was it? Uh, I think it was about 250. So 250, so it's like a 245? Yeah, it's equipment, so they call it the Premium Multisport. Premium Multisport, so it's like 245 heading towards 745. Yeah. Okay. Um, we tested it at Park Run yesterday, it seemed to work. So he's going to start them at a predetermined place and uh, we will then cut and paste in terms of shortening it up. We can do all that on Strava and then we'll get the information after the run. That makes sense? Okay, right, good. Right, so we're going to now hopefully get to London in one piece. Toby will do the run, show you some awesome B-roll 
and then at the end of the vid, we'll come through and go through all the data and stuff like that. Got it? Okay, right, so I'll see you in a bit. Right, so, so, watches. Firstly, what was it like starting them? Difficult. It was, even with Si, it was like, difficult. So there might be a slight discrepancy in a few seconds of the start time. Okay, well, I think, I think, the, view, right. I think the views will let you off. Cut yeah. a second here. Out there. One of them has gotten plenty more laps than the other. Because I took my snood up, it's warm out there. Yeah, it was really warm. It's warm. I took my snood up, trying to put my arm and it hit the lap. Oh yeah, but it doesn't matter because we'll we'll look at the yeah, overall. We can split yeah. it out. Um, we'll get back. But in, t uh, in terms of because we'll we'll stop now. We're going to go and get some food and then we'll look at the data and then we'll tell you scientifically because this was an science experiment. Yeah, I got one. It was hundred percent legitimate. hundred percent legitimate. There was no tomfoolery going around. Um, but did you stop them all as well? We stopped yeah. them all. Wait for sign. We stopped, we stopped, you stopped them all as well. Okay, right. Time. One that cor chorus keeps locking itself. That don't help. Not, oh, yeah. not very fat, big fans of the chorus back here. Um, even though he wasn't wearing it, I just put it out there. <laughs> um, okay, right. So yeah, let's go and get something to eat, and then we'll we'll break the data down. Yeah, break it down. Break it down or fall down. <laughs> right, we're just stuffing our faces. So, so first up, right. So there's the splits. Hang on, let's just change the camera around. That's the four Garmin's. That's the four Garmin's. So there, there's slight deviation on, on the distances, isn't there? Yeah. And what was interesting, Tope just said, the 55, which is this one, uh, once again, failed to get or struggled to get GPS at the start. And that's done the same yesterday when we tested this. So in terms of the, the times on the Garmin's, is there much difference? Um, well, it's going to be because of the distances as well, yeah? Yeah, so there's a bit of difference on Read time. Read them out. Right? But they were, the distances were a bit off. Distances were out. What was the closest to it? Uh, the closest to it yeah. is the Phoenix. The Phoenix was the best. 6.25. 6.25, so that was the closest. And in terms of overall time, I know you've got maybe a second out in, on some. Yeah, actually, the all of them except the 55. Yeah. Were bang on same time. Same time. So they're all the same time. Well, same overall time, but yeah, the paces yeah, yeah. are all over. Paces all over the place. Yeah. yeah. So the the Phoenix and yeah. the two four five are quite similar. So Phoenix two four five similar. Eight fifteen eight twenty five. Eight fifteen eight twenty five. I'm repeating that because Toby mumbled, and he's just <laughs> had five sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 745, currently 755. So you ran quicker on the 745. So that if you want to like get fake times, run with a 745. Or 20 seconds. Or 20, 20 seconds per mile. Yeah. So the 745 was, just to repeat that, was 20 seconds per mile out versus that's the a, other that's two. That's ridiculous. That's a lot. Mm. Over 10k. Over 10k. So if it's you over think about it, that's like no. 10k. And the 55 is just under 8 minutes. Um, eight minutes, so the eight minutes. So again, fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds out. So the fifty-five and the seventy-seven four five were the worst in terms of where you are in relation to your finishing time and all that sort of stuff. But then they measured longer, and and they measured longer. The pace is down. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. So, so in terms of the Garmin, the Fenix was the most accurate. Six point two five. And the second, and the second most accurate. Uh, based on your time and, and the, the course length and all that? 245. The 245. Okay, right. Now, let's talk about the Coros. Okay, right. So the Coros score is in. And firstly, Coros, just as a shout out, if Tobe can't work out how to convert or how to move it from kilometres to miles, you may need to look at it because he's quite smart. Well, oh, you know. Because there'll be somebody in the comments now who says, you just press that button. But Tobe basically couldn't work out. So anyway, we spent about three hours Googling it. And... Um, no success. No, we got it, but effectively the Coros came out the same as the 745 and the 55, so more inaccurate versus the. So that backs up me. Actual time. Can't get a Coros. Yeah, size, size anti Coros, by the way. Why are you anti Coros? Because it, it locks itself and it's too fiddly, the touchscreen don't work properly. There you go, it here first from Apex, Apex Coros. Don't buy. Don't buy. So, in terms of the data, right, to conclude it, 
you would say the FedEx is the most accurate, yeah? Versus, again, we're, we're basing this, we've worked it out against um, gun time, distance, all that sort of stuff is what we've worked this out now. And uh, next place was the 245 yeah. from Garmin. And then 55, well, as much as I like, want to like it because of the value of it. And I, I mean, How much is the 55? It's, it's cheap. 100, no, 100 quid. 100 quid, something like that. It's so cheap. But there were a review coming out on that. Um, but the GPS was a nightmare. So we'll, we'll find out on the review of that if, it's, if it carries on doing that. But 745 sounds like that's the most inaccurate. And then you've got the Coros, which weren't all that either. Again, it, it's, a, it's a funny thing because we're in London. There's, you know, black areas in terms of the... Blackout areas. What we've learned is Toby's watch that was most inaccurate on the track is now the most accurate one. Yeah, actually, that's Maybe a good point. Right. So what we've, yeah. Does that mean that you... Key takeaway is that Toby's watch that was massively inaccurate Supposedly. On, on the thing because um, the data from the 5K was so wrong, which is why we've done this video, is actually the most accurate today. But the difference is, and this is the key, what they're forgetting, is that he actually ran a lap more than everybody else. And I think we'll leave that there, shall we, boys? Look at his face, look, look, look at his face. His driver and look at his face, look, look, he's still going on about his driver. Nuts. Right, so say goodbye, oh, and well done for scientifically coming with this. Sorry, well done for straight and corals. That's all I, right. <laughs> sorry about that, corals. Um, I think that's it, isn't it? Another, another value-added video from us again, boys. Well done, right, say bye. 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 <laughs>